بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحبه في الله continuing on in our study of al usul al thalatha and we we're talking about ibada the sheikh muhammad ibn abd wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala that he was mentioning from and illustrating for us that there are various types of ibadah, that ibadah in Islam, worship in Islam, is not restricted to things that are outward, for example, the salat and the hajj and so forth, but they also require from us, and they are, and also some types of worship are inward, and some types of worship combine all, uh, all parts of iman, or which are all our components of iman. For example, statements of the tongue, Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, or making the testimony of faith, the shahada, or other types of ibadah which are inward predominantly, like tawakkal, like trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we mentioned, and isti'ana, and, and, and seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and having hope, al raja wa khawf, and, and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are not necessarily actualized outside on our limbs so much, but they're inward acts of ibadah. And then we have, of course, the outward acts of iman in worship. For example, uh, paying zakat, for example, or the prayer, the salat, or performing the hajj, as we mentioned, or removing something harmful in the road, or just smiling at someone. All of these, if they're done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are types of ibadah. And we can rest assured of, uh, rest assured of that because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned those things as acts of ibadah. And even just having good manners in general is one of the, one of the great deeds that a Muslim can do. One of the greatest things that a Muslim can do after tawheed and so forth and exhibiting that tawheed and sincerity to Allah is just having good and righteous manners. To everyone, showing and illustrating the true Islam by being righteous. Because the Prophet Muhammad said, Ma min shayin athkulu fi mizana mu'min yawm al qiyamah min husn al khulq wa inna allaha yubghidu al fahish al bidi. He said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than righteous uh, uh, manners or deeds. Min husn al khulq from uh, righteous. Uh, Manners. And verily, Allah detests wicked and evil speech. So being cautious of what we say in the tongue. And, and I remind myself and remind my brothers and sisters to not be of those people who curse others and those people who speak ill of others and backbite and slander others. We have to be very careful of that because those are some of the major sins. In fact, the one who does namima and spreads wickedness throughout the community uh, by spreading tales about people, that this person is deserving of the punishment of the grave. This is one of the major sins that entitles a person or a person will be rewarded in the negative sense with punishment in the grave. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, or in the hadith of, I believe it was Ibn Abbas or perhaps it was Abu Hurairah where he said, Marra Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala kabrain. He said, and the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was walking by two graves. فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كبير. He said, verily they're being punished in their grave and they're not being punished for something which is great. As for one of them, is they used to not clean themselves from urine. And as for the second one, he used to uh, spread namima. So, and namima, habitatillah, as the ulama explain, is to carry tales about people with the purpose of spreading wickedness, with the purpose of spreading people's sins and wickedness. So this is something uh, very shameful and that we have to strive to avoid, that this is a, a major sin and it's so prevalent. As the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, when, what did he say in the beginning of the hadith? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, 
إنهم ليعذبن وما يعذبن في كبير. They're being punished, and they're not being punished for something which the people consider to be great, or which is considered to be great. Going back to the types of ibadah, ahbati fi Allah, that Imam Muhammad ibn Dhahab, rahmatullah alayhi, mentioned, he mentioned slaughtering. And he said the evidence for this is a saying of Allah which means, say verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah, the Lord of the, uh, of the worlds. He has no partner and of this I have been commanded and I am the first of the Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ said, may Allah curse whoever slaughters for other than Allah. So that lets us know that slaughtering is an act of ibadah. Otherwise, there would be no punishment tied to it if you did it to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you sacrifice for other than Allah, then uh, there would be no punishment if it was not considered something uh, sinful to do to, other than, uh, to, to slaughter for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So letting us know that it is an act of worship. Also, vowing. The evidence for this is the saying of Allah, which means they are those who fulfill their vows and fear a day whose evil will be widespreading. And those are just the acts of ibadah that Imam Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in his treaties. And we'll be moving on to the second fundamental in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.